Look at all this canola. So beautiful. So good, eh? Oh, that's. There you go. Magic happens. Anyway, so here I am, Lake Bolac, and I'm in a depression. So, what we have here, let's have a look at. Don't look at my face. The, this is a salt lake. So if you if you taste it, it's uh, quite salty. And there's another salt lake over there, another salt lake over there. And what you see all around is you have high elevations, so low hills. And this is all basalt. So all basalt. And over that way we have Lake Bolac, which is our fresh water. So obviously the water uh, has an exit. But here, these are enclosed. So whatever water is flowing in here has no exit the only exit would be evaporation and that's what happens here so that's why these are salt lakes salt is being flowed into here by the rivers and also probably leach from the basalt and it has no way of getting out so when the water evaporates it leaves the salt and over time it's just built up a high concentration of salt so I don't know what the concentration is here and I don't know why this is a low elevation it could be that this was a former watercourse former lake that's just been dammed by the basalt so the flow probably would have been that way there's a there's a lower elevations over that way but even on top of the hills is a vessel. So underneath here is the Grampians group. So that's Ordovician to Silurian sedimentary rock. And this is quite nice. So these have our saltwater crabs, I believe they do. I've never looked into the floor of here, but my cousins got them when they were younger. So we have nice beautiful canola, so this is a crop that occurs here, so all that's probably going to be canola as well. And here we have a salt flats over there, and that's a salt lake as well. So this is very interesting in a canola. And obviously this is probably on top of basalt as well. Uh, so the percolation through the clay will be very slow. So uh the leakage so the clay probably acts a bit like an aquitard it's not siltstone or sandstone which has a higher flow rate uh, but underneath where the basalt is where it's cracked the flow rate will be quite high so once it reaches there it actually would evaporate uh, lose a lot of water fairly quickly so this could have been a mar volcano so that's just where water has uh seeped into the ground, interacted with the actual lava, and then caused an explosion. So look up Mar Volcanoes, but I'm not too sure if this is it, I'm just guessing here. Uh, I don't think a lot of the volcanic eruption points have been mapped in Victoria, but it will be interesting to go around and to, to, to go to a lot of them and see where they are. So this could be another Mar volcano, but this is quite a lot larger than the one that we just saw. And uh, this road has just been made in between it, so this might be an artificial road that cuts it in half. So anyway, that's very interesting. Salt Lakes in central Victoria. So if we zoom out and see how big it is. Ooh. Uh, you, if you go swimming in there, you're probably floating it. So, in summer, that it would actually evaporate. Uh, this is the first time I've actually seen it so high. When I came here about two years ago, uh, there's pr pretty much only half the water in it. And in 2009, this is pretty dry. So, it does evaporate. It's not very deep. I think the deepest is like waist height now. Uh, but a lot of the times it's lower than that. So it might have a lot of brine. And, and when it evaporates, because a lot of shrimp and that do develop in here, uh, it comes a highly concentrated in that food source, in which a lot of birds do wander around to uh, have a nice little meal. Anyway, it's a bit cold. It's only about 10 degrees here. It's bloody freezing. 
Wish I lived in a mold dies, 30 degrees each day. Beautiful. Thank you and goodbye.